All right, it is good to see you here tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I want to talk to you tonight about no fear. No fear. In 2 Timothy, the first... Go ahead and get, get to Joshua, but I want to start out in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Well, it, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. So if we just kind of launch out in our title tonight, No Fear, uh, if God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, then we know where fear comes from. Okay, fear comes from Satan. All right, I heard one time fear means, uh, you know, I just thought of it. What is it? <laughs> false? False evidence appearing real. Thank you, Cindy. I, I had it right there, and here we just know that, folks. God does not want us to fear. Okay, and you will see this all through the Scripture we're fixing to look at. But of power, and we know the power to not fear is the Holy Spirit. Folks, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us all the time. All the time we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. So we should not fear. We should not fear. And of love, okay, talking about God's love, and a sound mind. And, you know, it's not talking about your IQ there. I believe it's talking about your faith. Okay, a sound mind. A sound mind means I may not understand everything that's going on in my life, but I can discern what's from God and what's not from God. Okay, so as we launch out there, just remember that fear comes from Satan. Okay, we should not fear. And let me go ahead and give you the outline. Number one, we should not fear because of God's promises. Because of God's promises. Number two, we should not fear because of God's presence. We have His promises and we have His presence. And number three, we should not fear because of God's power. He has the power for us to overcome fear. And truthfully, uh, and, and I will say this more than once uh, in our Bible study tonight, uh, the opposite of fear is faith. Okay, the opposite of fear is faith. We need to be practicing faith in our lives. We need to believe God. We need to believe the words of God. We need to believe the Bible, and we need to believe that He can help us overcome any fear that we have in our life. Joshua 1, verse 1, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them and the children of Israel. And folks, uh, we know it's hard to follow a legend. Okay, I mean Moses, uh, you realize that he wrote, you know, penned the first five books of the Bible. Uh, you realize that uh, he was a great leader. All right? You know he was the one that went to Mount uh, Sinai and he, you know, he, he got uh, the Ten Commandments. And, uh, you know, to follow a man like that, uh, it would be like following Billy Graham somewhere. Okay, or like J. Harold Smith somewhere. Okay, so naturally uh, there would be some, and, and I don't want to say fear of that, but just, you know, knowing who he was, knowing, uh, you know, what God did through him. I mean, you think of the crossing of the Red Sea. Uh, it just was an incredible thing uh, that, that Moses was able to do. But here's the deal, folks. If God calls you to a place of leadership, He has already given you everything you need 
to fulfill that call. Okay, He wouldn't call you if he didn't think you couldn't do it. And a lot of times that battle is inside of us and inside of our own mind. Okay, And here's the advantage Joshua had. Uh, he, he got to watch. He, he, he was somewhat of a, you know, Moses was a mentor of his. Uh, so he saw what God did through Moses. And so Joshua, and, and really God was preparing Joshua for this very thing that we are talking about. Then it says, uh, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I have given Moses. So what is that, folks? That is a promise. He is promising him, listen, I'm going to take care of you just as I've taken care of Moses. And folks, that's true with us also. Why? I mean, you just read all through the, the, the Bible. You, you can start with Moses. Well, really, you can start with Abraham, okay, the father of faith in Genesis chapter 12. And you can just go to Moses. You can, you can just walk through uh, the prophets, Elijah and Elijah. And you can just see uh, these men of God walking by faith. And then you look at the New Testament and uh, you look at the disciples uh, and you know, you know, being called by Jesus and him seeing Jesus, them seeing Jesus and what you know what Jesus was able to do. And so we have these things in our lives as examples of things. And folks, here, here's the bottom line. If if God calls you to something, He will give you the ability. You should not fear. You should not doubt. You should not. And, and sometimes we're the hardest on ourselves. Okay? God is going to be with you. And that's what He was telling Joshua. And then He gives the directions. You know, and again, on a map, if you were looking, we're looking north, south, east, and west from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. And he's basically saying, Joshua, you lead these folks into the promised land. You lead them. And again, we remember Moses and, and God telling him, you know, you're not going to do this. You're not going to be able to do this. And uh, Joshua picked up the mantle there. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 with me. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. And we're going to look in verse 23. Hebrews 11. Verse 23. Now notice in verse 23, by faith. Verse 24, by faith. Verse 27, by faith. Verse 28, by faith. Verse 29, by faith. And folks, Faith is the key to overcoming fear. Faith is the key. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. And every time we read this in Scripture, you're going to see these phrases all through the Scripture uh, that we're pointing out tonight. Not be afraid. Do not fear. All right? By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. There's that word again, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Folks, he knew. He knew God was real. He knew Jehovah God was with him in everything that he did. Verse 28, By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he who, touched, who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. So we see Moses walk by faith. And we as Christians, we need to walk by faith also. Now look at Hebrews chapter 13. Just go a couple of chapters over. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. 
Be content with the things which you have. For he, for he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Folks, that is a promise from God. You are never alone. I don't care uh, you know, if you're a widow. I don't care if you're off somewhere by yourself. I don't care you know, you know, if you're somewhere at night in a parking lot. I'm telling you, you are never alone. Okay? He will never leave us. His Spirit is always inside of us. And that should be a calming thing in our own lives. And we should not fear. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. And folks, I'm just telling you, if you know the Lord, you've taken care of the most important decision in your life. Okay? Because you know God, He is leading you, He is guiding you, and everything, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So even in uncomfortable situations, folks, I'm telling you, God is with you. He never leaves you or forsakes you. Verse 7, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the Word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that parted the Red Sea is our God. The same God that took care of Moses and the children of Israel is our God. So we need to understand because of God's promises, we should not fear. The second thing I want you to see is because of God's presence. Look at verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. There, there goes the promises. It just keeps going down through there. As I was with Moses, so, so I will be with you. Folks, what is that? Folks, it's God's presence. And remember, even when they were in the wilderness, all right, God's presence was with them. All right, it was a cloud by day and it was fire by night. They knew when to pick up and they knew when to go. Uh, they knew uh, when to stay. Everything, you know, God was guiding them through uh, this wilderness experience. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Isn't it neat how not just, I mean, we read that in, in Hebrews. And we see that in the book of Joshua. And so it, it's just confirmation all through the Word of God. There's, there's four or five references in the Bible that is just the exact quote. Uh, we're going to read one in Deuteronomy here in just a few minutes. So he is basically saying the same thing there. Now, look at verse 6. Be strong, be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance of the land which I swore to the fathers uh, to give them. Only be, very, be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. So he's basically saying whatever God tells us to do, we need to do. Okay, obedience is the key. Okay, faith in obedience is the key to not fearing. Hold your finger there and go to Deuteronomy. Go to just back a few pages. Deuteronomy chapter 31. And this is Moses speaking. He was knowing he was about to die and speaking to the children of Israel. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God Himself crosses over before you. Folks, what is that? That is His presence. Just as He parted the Red Sea, He parted the Jordan River also. And I'm just telling you folks, there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. His promises say that. 
and, and His presence is so real. Folks, I love to be in worship services when you just feel like the presence of God is, it's almost like you could reach out and touch His presence. And, and that calming assurance that He is with us is so important. And truthfully, the most important thing in a worship service, yes, music is important. Yes, I love our praise and worship time. Yes, I count it a great privilege to be able to share the Word of God with people. But what makes it true worship is the presence of God. And even in our own prayer closets, even in our own prayer times, Okay, we can sense the presence of God in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I, 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 I've talked to Mike Boyd twice a day for several days, and he keeps telling me every day, he said, man, we can feel your prayers. We can feel your prayers. We can feel your prayers. And I'm telling you folks, that is the presence of God. And that's part of what we do as intercessory prayer warriors. That's one of the reasons. And folks, I know it's an old and traditional thing that Southern Baptists do, but I still think half a Bible study and a half a prayer time is what God wants us to do. That's how important prayer is. Okay, Knowing that God hears. Knowing that God's presence is with us. And the Lord God Himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you and you shall dispose of them. And Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sion and Og and the kings of the Amorites and their land when he destroyed them. And folks, his presence gives us that kind of confidence. His presence does that. The Lord will give them over to you that you may do to them according to every commandment which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. And folks, we could go back to when they sent the spies in. And ten of the twelve spies said, man, we can't do it. We can't do it. There are giants in that land. Yes, there are huge city, city, and, city and walls. They have huge armies and numbers of armies. And they gave that negative report. And that's why they ended up, because they disobeyed God, they ended up wandering around in the wilderness. And who are the two? Caleb and Joshua. Because they believe God. And they, they believed in His promises and they believed in His presence. That's, that, that was the important thing there. Now look what it says. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, In the sight of all of Israel, be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which uh, the Lord has sworn to the fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. Notice the word there, you must go. Folks, I am telling you, if God calls you, if God tells you to do something, you must go. I'll never forget leaving Cameron Baptist Church, uh, you know, which I'd been a member there for 36 years. I was born and grew up in the church. I was youth minister in the church. And I came uh, to First Baptist Church of, of Alma. And I'm telling you, the only person I knew in, church, in that church and in the state of Arkansas was Bob Shelton. And I, Lori wasn't doubting, but she asked me several times, are you sure? Are you sure? And I said, honey, I, I am as sure as anything uh, that, that I'm sure about. And of course, you know, I, I just feel like that part, that move, moved me into the associate pastor role, which prepared me for the role that I have here. And folks, I believe with all my heart, i tell you one thing, my father told me late in life, and, and I'll never forget this. He said, when God tells you to do something, you need to do it. And I said, Dad, what are you talking about? And, and again, this was probably about a year before he died. He said, I really think 
I should have been in some form of ministry. And I said no to God. Okay, and I'm telling you that just stuck with me. Man, it stuck with me. And and folks, don't fear. Okay, God gives you opportunities and you need to follow those opportunities. Yes, follow your heart, but also follow the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. Then it says, be strong and of good courage. Uh, you must go. I, I read that, verse 8. And the Lord... He is the one who goes before you, okay? He is the one who goes before you. He prepares the way for you. That's his presence, folks. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Isn't it amazing how many times that is said in Scripture here? And then go to Joshua 5. I want, to, I want you to see this. Joshua 5. Joshua 5.13, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man, notice the capital M is deity, stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And folks, this was the, the big city. This was the first big obstacle. All right? And Joshua went and said to him, Are you uh, for us or are you our adversaries? What does that mean? He wanted to know right then whose side you're on. Well, folks, let me tell you, let me give you a key here. Be on the Lord's side, okay? Be on the Lord's side. You will win. So he said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Who did God send? I believe it was Jesus. Okay, he appeared several times in Scripture. And I, I mean, again, in let me keep reading. This is so cool. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? That's why I say, I believe it was Jesus. He worshiped. And not only that, look at verse 15. Then the commander of the Lord of the army said to Joshua, take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Does that sound familiar to you? That was the very thing he told Moses when he was called. The very same thing. You talk about confirmation from the Lord. You talk about the presence of the Lord. You talk about the very same quotation. Okay? And to know that God's presence with us, folks, it should wipe away all fear. The last thing I want you to see Back in Joshua 1, not only because of his promises and his presence, but because of his power. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. What is he saying? He's given you a key to finding direction and for finding God's will for your life. He's given you a key for both of that. Okay, what is it? It's the Word of God. Folks, that's why every day, every day, every day, we need to pick up the Word of God. That's why when we see and we hear instructions from the Word of God, we apply that. We apply that uh, to our lives. Okay, it's, it's the Bible. Okay, it, it, it's, it's our instruction booklet. All right, it leads us and it guides us. And it says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Folks, I'm telling you, obedience is so important in, in making the Word of God a part of your life. And folks, that's what I, and it happens in my life. When things happen in my life, I'm telling you, it's, it's as if God quotes scriptures in my head. When certain things happen, I mean, you know, because, and again, I, I don't have the whole Bible. I don't have memorized. I don't have whole chapters memorized. But somehow God has allowed me to remember many, many, many verses. And when situational things happen, I'm telling you, those verses pop up in my head. And I believe it's the Holy Spirit that gives me those verses. And that Holy Spirit 
gives me that assurance that everything is going to be all right. Look at verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Folks, I am telling you, God is in us. God is with us. God is for us. His power, His power is in us. We have that, that Holy Spirit power, that Acts 2, dunamis, the word where we get our word dynamite. Okay? God is powerful. His word is powerful. Okay? We need to be in love with the word of God. Hebrews 4. Go with me to Hebrews 4 if you would. Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is living and powerful. Living. That means it's alive, folks. It, it applies to us today. And even when, and, and I understand there are some things that sneak up on you and, and could just scare you. Let's just use the word scare this time. Okay? Even in those situations, verses can come to you. And when you quote verses, I'm telling you, you are doing battle against Satan. That's what spiritual warfare is. I'm telling you, Satan wants you afraid. Satan wants you to doubt God. Satan wants you to live in fear. And if we apply that, if we meditate, if we uh, have Scripture ready, we can quote Scripture. There's, there's many times when I just start busting that. And, and folks, don't say it to yourself. Say it out loud. All right? Where Satan can hear it and the demons can hear it what you're saying. We're doing battle in that power. This is the Word of God. The Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, that means it, it cuts coming and going. And two, the second thing about memorizing the Word of God is it when you are focusing on that, God made us to where we can't think two thoughts at one time. So if we're focusing on the Word, then those negative thoughts they leave us, and we can have that calm assurance when we quote the Word of God. It is living, powerful, sharper than any two, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit, and the joints and the marrow. Folks, I'm telling you, the Word of God cuts through, okay, all kinds of things, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's where I go, folks. The negative thinking. Man, you, you don't need to be a negative thinker. You need to be a positive thinker. You need to, you know, see the good in things. You need to, you know, not always, you know, think, hey, this is going to happen to me or this. Folks, I'm just telling you, as a man thinketh in his heart, the Bible says in Proverbs, so is he. So if we have the Word of God, we have the sword of the Spirit. I mean, when you put on the armor, it... It, you know the the next to the last. It, it's the it's the you know the sword of the spirit. That's the word of God. So have that available. And I'm telling you, we still have cards that we get every Monday morning with one scripture on that that we do our best uh, to memorize. Steve and I do, and I think that has helped us. You know when we come to these battles in our lives and we come to spiritual warfare. Psalm chapter 1. Go with me to Psalm 1. Psalm chapter 1. I'm getting there. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now look at verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Folks, that's the Word of God. The Word of God. And in His law, He meditates day and night. This is my basis for having a morning devotion and an evening devotion. It's straight out of the Word of God. The morning devotion gets you ready for the day. The evening devotion gets you ready for sleep. Okay? Very, very important. And He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Do you not see 
Some of the same phrases that we just read in Joshua chapter 1 is right there. You want to not fear? Man, spend time in the Word of God. Engraft the Word of God into your life. Memorize Scripture. Quote Scripture out loud. And I promise you, uh, it will help you. John 14. John 14. John 14, verse 25. John 14, 25. The Bible says these things. And, and folks, this is the word. This is Jesus' words. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, that's the power, okay, that we're talking about, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I've said to you. That's part of that remembrance and memorizing. Okay, the Holy Spirit empowers you to do that. And here's verse 27. Peace I leave with you. Folks, God wants Christians to be at peace. Okay, he doesn't want you to fear. He doesn't want you to be afraid. And I'm telling you, i tell you the other thing I do. I, I listen to a lot of Christian music, a lot of Christian music. Why? Because a lot of the music is Scripture. It is Scripture. And, and those things, are, a lot of times, even, even you know, uh, when I have trouble sleeping or I wake up early, man, I'll put my headphones on and I'll just, I'll just listen to m music. And, and I'm telling you, I, I, a lot of times, even sleep-wise, I think I fall back asleep, but my brain memorizes the course and memorizes some of those things. And when I hear it in regular daytime, I know every word that it says. Every word to that song I know. Okay? And, and that gives you peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives to you. Look at this. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Folks, that's coming out of Jesus' mouth there. Okay? We don't. We really don't have even any reason to fear. There really is no reason to fear. And then the last one, Psalms 56. Psalm 56. And this is my last scripture. I know sometimes I say that and it's not. <laughs> but this is my last one. Psalms 56, verse 3. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word music, song, psalms. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Folks, I'm protected by God. I am under the divine protection of God. He is my shield. He is my strength. He is my refuge. Then skip down to verse 9. When I cry out to you, when my enemies will turn, when I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Folks, we have nothing to fear. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for uh, the, the lesson in Joshua. God, I pray that we would just uh, replace fear with faith. And God, I pray that uh, when we do fear, Lord, that we will pray, that we will quote Scripture, that we will sing psalms. And God, I pray, and, and I know, God, you will. I know you will take that fear away from us. Lord, I know it's spiritual warfare. And God, the Bible says, greater is he than a in us than he that is in the world. So God, I pray that you would just help us to realize your promises are true, your presence is real, and you are almighty God. You are most powerful. And God, everything that you have, you have made available to us. So God, I pray that we won't look around or we try to figure it out or Figure the odds of things. God, uh, man, you're in control of everything that happens in our lives. So God, just 
again, thank you that we do not have to fear. We can lay our heads on the pillow and we can be at peace with God, peace with our family and peace with our fellow man. And God, just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rye Hill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.